Yesterday, news broke that Lil Durk was arrested in Broward County, Florida. The rapper faces charges of a contract killing and is held without bail. Lil Durk's arrest came shortly after five alleged members of his OTF collective were detained on charges of contract killing and conspiracy to commit murder. Their case is tied to the 2022 murder of Quando Rondo's cousin, Savia Robinson, in Los Angeles. The car with Quando Rondo and his cousin was fired upon, but Quando Rondo, the attacker's main target, was unharmed. The prosecution alleges that plane tickets and car rentals for the five men were paid for using a card linked to the OTF label. Furthermore, one OTF member allegedly promised lucrative music promotion opportunities to anyone who would kill Quando Rondo. Police believe the shooting aimed at Quando Rondo's car was revenge for the death of Lil Durk's protege King Von, who was shot by a person close to Rondo near a club in Atlanta in 2020. Some sources say Dirk could face the death penalty. Florida, where he was arrested, still enforces the death penalty in cases of aggravated murder, but will the drill legend actually face such a sentence? In this video, we'll attempt to answer that question and unravel this complex case. Let's get started. the most famous drill artist may spend the rest of his life behind bars. This week, Chicago rapper Lil Durk was arrested on charges of a contract killing involving rapper Quando Rondo in Los Angeles in August 2022. Instead, Quando's cousin, Lul Pab, was killed, which led to his desperate cries at the scene. Dirk later included those cries in the intro to an unreleased song, delighting the same audience and rats on Reddit, who now call Dirk a fool for getting involved in this conflict. Dirk's arrest highlights the conflict between his friend and OTF member King Von, killed in 2020, and their rivals Young Boy Never Broke Again, detained, and Quando Rondo, awaiting sentencing next week in a federal substances case. The saddest part is that it's unclear why the conflict started in the first place. All these artists were once friends. Chicago rapper Lil Reese, a close friend of Dirk, said that NBA Youngboy used to visit him in Chicago. In 2019, Dirk made a social media post noting, Youngboy is so cool, King Von and Rondo, who is signed to Youngboy's label, were friends. But apparently, something happened behind the scenes that ruined their relationship. In a March 2019 livestream, King Von mocked NBA Youngboy's music saying, quote, Your rhymes are fake, but then backed down, saying he was joking and that they had a song together. In February 2020, Von posted on social media urging Youngboy to release their joint song. In August 2020, Von posted a photo holding hands with someone fans likely identified as Jania Meshel, Youngboy's sister. The next day, Youngboy posted a photo captioned, I'll have my son sleep with your daughter while you're trolling, which many saw as a message directed at Von. Around the same time, Quando Rondo and Lil Reese began trading insults on social media. I don't need no academics. Man, you don't deserve to live no more, bit, bro. I hope you die on God. <laughs> Just days before King Von's death, a young boy song featuring his girlfriend, rapper Asian Doll, leaked online. In November 2020, King Von described his rift with young boy in an interview with DJ Academics, noting that it's not that serious and that the internet was exaggerating the situation. Game, man. Talk. Shit, these niggas tell us shit. That's the, what, you, what you mean in the I'm game? The, the rap, rap game. game. These niggas telling, okay? That niggas, <laughs> niggas bogus. Shit, what else? Yeah, it be just, it be just and then niggas be choosing side. We like, like yeah. say you don't fuck with a nigga, but you will fuck with another nigga. But I guess he'll fuck with that nigga too, harder than he fuck with you. So, so he don't fuck with you. You'll start see niggas get on following you and shit on Instagram yeah. and shit. Niggas oh, will stop yeah. talking to you and shit. Niggas will get the, you know, but you'll see niggas be getting closer. You be like, what the fuck? Like that's that's gay as hell. You just, and you like nigga, I ain't got no you know, issue with you. Now nah, it, it's cool. It could be like that if that's how they want it to be. Cause mm -hmm. I'm with that I, I like that Like let me know what it is though But mm -hmm. the nigga wanna let you know Nigga see you again and be there Yeah on some host shit And you don't wanna smack his ass On phone mm -hmm. But nigga be, be wrong Cause niggas really ain't like that And right. they be acting like that but That'd be some of the whole shit Niggas be bogus This was his last interview Later that night He confronted Quando In an Atlanta club Fought with him And then was reportedly Fatally shot by Quando's friend Lul Tim Von's death took the conflict Beyond reconciliation Dirk Who had known Von for years And signed him after his release From prison Following murder charges In 2017 Helped transform Dirk's OTF Only the family label Into a major rap movement With a ruler clip 
Boy, don't play with me, this bitch a hoe. Matter at the store, you know how. In the following years, Dirk, Youngboy, and Quando exchanged jabs on social media and through diss tracks. Fans fueled the feud, calling for vengeance for King Von. To these fans, who often view rap-related street violence as a reality show, King Von's death wasn't a sign that things had gone too far. It was just another plot twist. Everything that happened between them before King Von's death seems to have been some form of competition that rappers usually outgrow, but which then escalated into a deadly feud. Not all feuds end badly, however. For instance, 50 Cent and Fat Joe had a conflict in the 2000s that seemed likely to turn violent but was eventually resolved, and they now appear close. Last February, 50 Cent told Rolling Stone that growing up made him realize he was wrong to pursue Joe in that way. He also said he understands what's happening between Dirk and Youngboy, calling it their street mentality. On Friday, new details emerged about Lil Dirk's arrest. The Chicago rapper was detained just an hour before his scheduled flight to Italy, as shown in new documents obtained by NBC Chicago. According to the FBI, authorities were alerted by US Customs and Border Protection that the rapper, whose real name is Devonte Dirk Banks, was booked on two international flights on Thursday. One was from Miami to Dubai, and the other from Fort Lauderdale to Switzerland. However, neither flight took off. Agents reported that Banks later booked a third flight on a private jet, scheduled to depart Miami for Italy, but he was arrested in the departure area an hour before takeoff. The Chicago rapper had just performed at the birthday bash event. Charges against Banks for contract killing surfaced as five members of the Chicago group, Only the Family, also known as OTF, with whom Banks is closely associated, were charged as co-conspirators in a contract killing conspiracy in Los Angeles, California. A grand jury charged OTF members Kayvon London Grant, known as Cuz or Vonny, DeAndre Dontrell Wilson, known as Diddy, Asa Houston, known as Boogie, and five unnamed accomplices, along with Keith Jones, known as Flacker, and David Brian Lindsay, known as Brown Eyes, described as members of other Chicago gangs. The indictment claims the men offered a bounty for rapper Quando Rondo, known as TB, in retaliation for the murder of another Chicago rapper, King Von, who was part of OTF and collaborated with Lil Durk. Some artists, like Brick Baby, claimed in a track that Lil Durk offered a $1 million reward for Lil Pab's death. There is also information that OTF rapper Jam gave testimony against Lil Durk and was later taken into police custody as a valuable witness. The murder case of rapper 051 Melly Melly, nicknamed Steph, is also being investigated in parallel. He was killed by a member of another gang named AJ. This killing was ordered and is considered revenge for the rapper D Thang, and it was likely also arranged by Lil Durk. A few days later, the well known song Ah Ha was released, where AJ appeared in the music video. Slash, slash. Man, we don't respond yeah. to shit. OTF is known as a rap collective, but according to a criminal case released Friday, it also operates as a de facto association of people involved in violence, including murders and assaults. However, the criminal case, obtained by NBC Chicago, now claims that it was Lil Durk who set a cash bounty for murder following the death of his friend King Von. What happened? According to the indictment, on November 6, 2020, an OTF member identified as DB engaged in a physical altercation with Quando Rondo at an Atlanta nightclub. During the fight, one of Rondo's associates pulled a gun and fatally shot DB. While officials haven't explicitly identified DB, rapper King Von, whose real name was Davon Bennett, was killed that same day. Additionally, the shooting led to the death of 34-year-old Mark Blakely and injuries to four others, per the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. After King Von's murder, an accomplice one allegedly used coded language to signal that a bounty or reward would be provided to anyone involved in Quando Rondo's killing as retaliation. Upon investigating Lil Durk's and his affiliates' iCloud accounts, federal authorities found evidence implicating him in Lul Pab's murder. Shortly before the incident, Lil Durk messaged an unknown person asking not to book flights under names connected to him or his team. Eventually, flights were booked with a card tied to an OTF member. Later, NBC Chicago reported that on August 18, 2022, after learning Quando Rondo was staying at a Los Angeles hotel, attackers traveled from Illinois to California to track and attempt to kill Rondo, using firearms, including full automatic weapons. Lil Durk also reportedly flew privately to California at that time. As part of the plot, one accomplice bought ski masks for the shooters and paid for hotel rooms using a 
credit card linked to Lil Durk. The men followed Quando Rondo's Black Escalade to a gas station on Beverly Boulevard, where they fired several rounds, killing SR, a passenger in Rondo's vehicle. SR is believed to be Lul Pab, Rondo's associate. Charges against five men include conspiracy, use of interstate facilities for murder for hire leading to death, possession and use of firearms, and possession of a machine gun for a violent crime resulting in death. Lil Durk faces additional conspiracy charges related to murder for hire resulting in death. It is unclear if he has retained lawyers. Previously, Dirk faced charges related to an Atlanta shooting that were dropped in 2022. FBG Duck's mother previously sued him, alleging that Dirk profited from Duck's 2020 murder. Notably, Lil Dirk has had a turbulent history with Chief Keefe, despite their ties to the Black Disciples and the OTF 300 set in Chicago's South Side. While both artists rose to fame during Drill Music's early days, Dirk's popularity stemmed from his collaborations with Keefe and the remix success of I Don't Like featuring Kanye West. While Dirk and Keefe found success, their collaborations were limited. Dirk established his own OTF movement instead of joining GBE, differentiating between OTF as a movement and OTF 300 as a gang. Despite early associations, Dirk and Keefe took separate paths, with Dirk's career increasingly independent of Keefe's influence. Tensions between Dirk and Keefe intensified in 2013 following Dirk's gun possession arrest. Allegedly, Keefe's failure to bail Dirk out caused a rift, with Dirk later making subtle jabs at Keefe, even mocking his choice of transportation. The conflict flared up further when a fake Instagram account impersonating Keefe insulted Dirk, resulting in Dirk threatening Keefe's friend, Capo, who attempted to mediate. Dirk later escalated the feud by referencing Keefe in a verse on the Chirac remix. In my hood, if you touch me, you get murk. Wing with that back and forth, it ain't no Ultimately, this could have ended as violently as the situation with Quando Rondo, but the two managed to de-escalate their feud in 2014. In another media-related controversy in 2023, Lil Durk challenged Takashi to a $50 million boxing match, stating he didn't want Takashi hurt, and suggesting Dubai as the venue. Takashi responded, claiming Durk sought attention for an album release, countering with a proposal for a free one-on-one -on -one fight in Miami. Takashi, by the way, sometimes crosses all possible and impossible boundaries, openly inviting trouble. This tracks from Takashi toward Lil Durk appear constantly, and the rapper doesn't hold back from other provocations, including in Chicago itself. Nobody could touch me. I went to O'Block at four in the morning, though. Four in the morning. I was there. I was chilling. I should call this shit No Block. It's ten o'clock. What the fuck, y'all niggas at? Cause now we saw the surveillance video. He was there for like thirty seconds. Nah, it was actually like fifteen. After the death of King Von, a close associate, Takashi did not hesitate to react to this news with an emoji. Then he went even further by finding a Lil Durk lookalike and putting a bomber jacket on him, featuring an image of King Von. On, as if to reproach Dirk for not being able to protect his close ones and label mates. Game, man. Talk. Shit, these niggas tell us shit. That's the, what, you, what you mean in the I'm game? I'm talking about the rap, rap game. game. These niggas telling, okay? That niggas, sick as bogus. Shit, what else? Yeah, it be just. It be just a and then niggas be choosing shit. side. We like, like, say you don't fuck with a nigga, but you will fuck with another nigga. But I guess he'll fuck with that nigga too. Harder than he fuck with you, so. Obviously, this kind of behavior from Takashi will sooner or later lead to a confrontation in real life. And when that happens, he'll need to pray to come out alive. That's why, immediately after being released from prison, Hernandez hired an expensive security team that accompanied him literally everywhere. But let's get back to Lil Durk's arrest. The aforementioned 50 Cent has many parallels to this whole situation. His upbringing in South Queens attracted many of his fans, as it's a dangerous neighborhood. Gangster rap pioneer Ice-T even called 50 Cent the last gangster rapper. But in 2024, there are no long-term reasons for an artist's main appeal to be their ability to shoot a competitor. Fans who follow Reddit pages and watch videos with shootouts want to see artists walking the metaphorical tightrope between art and reality. They want to feel that Lil Durk's lines about contract killings refer to someone specific, and when an artist inevitably stumbles during this act and falls from a height, sometimes fatally, it's entirely their fault. In the end, people die because of stupid conflicts and online beefs, and if they don't die, they end up with huge prison sentences. 
For example, Rolling Stone magazine believes that drill rap is a dead-end branch of development that artists no longer need to pursue. This isn't a statement about artistic value. Drill has given us geniuses like Dirk, Chief Keef, G Herbo, Chef G, and Pop Smoke, while artists like Cash Cobain and Ice Spice have expanded this universe. But the drill scene overall has become too tarnished by criminalization. There are too many fans who view rappers as racist, hyper-masculine caricatures that disregard the value of life itself, and there are now more prosecutors than ever waiting to catch artists in the next gang-related indictment. Much of the violence on the streets happens because people are defending their reputations, and unfortunately drill music is so closely tied to street violence that these behavior patterns have bled into the fan community as well. Instead of this situation raising concern, it has become entertainment that artists feel obligated to play into. In the track Wonderful Wayne and Jackie Boy, Lil Durk raps, quote, I don't argue on the internet, that nonsense goes on for years, yet he still occasionally played with fire just to let people know who he is, a gangster. This is why, after King Von's death, Lil Durk's lyrics became filled with hints of revenge. And here's where it led. Could a rapper face the death penalty? In Florida, where he was arrested, the death penalty is still applied in cases of aggravated murder. Six people were executed in the state last year. But the murder of Robinson took place in California, where a moratorium on the death penalty was declared in 2019. A sentence can be given, but not executed. Most likely, the accused faces life imprisonment, which of course, is also not a favorable outcome for Lil Durk. It's possible that Lil Durk will be prosecuted under the RICO Act. The maximum penalty under RICO can include up to 20 years in prison for each separate offense. In some cases, if the crime is related to murder, life imprisonment or even the death penalty can be imposed, depending on state laws and the circumstances of the case. Additionally, defendants can face large fines and asset forfeiture. Look at the example of Young Thug. Something similar may be awaiting Lil Durk. That's all for now. What do you think about the situation with Lil Durk? Write your opinion in the comments, like, and subscribe to the channel. Bye everyone.